Well, we have a new version of the GPT-4 now trained on GPT-J. These models are released lately in the open source community so quickly that it's hard to keep up and be able to try all of them. This one is particularly very interesting because now it has license that allows commercial use. And also it's interesting, they publish a paper describing how they train the model and how they obtain the data. It seems that they no longer use the data that obtained using GPT-35 Turbo, which is really very good. They also seem to change the existing data that they use originally to train the GPT-0. In the document, they state that they curated the original 400k GPT-0 examples with new examples, now using multi-turn Q&A samples and creative writing such as poetry, rap, and short stories. That's very interesting. They're also very open about how they cleaned the data and how they curated the data. Most of the companies using commercial large language models are not really that open to how they did it. There is also information and documentation about how you can try to reproduce the training. This gives you the opportunity to first download the training data that they used to tune the GPTJ model, but then also add your own training data and extend the model or additionally tune the model if you think that that makes sense for your use case. What's really great in this release also is just it's very easy to install on Mac, Ubuntu or Windows, especially for people that are not that into the tech. So let's see how the installation is going to work using my Mac here. So if you click on this link, a file will be downloaded. You just have to open it, click double click to install it. Now, if you get something like this, just cancel it with right mouse click and then open and then open again. And then the setup is going to start. You have to specify where you want to install it, which component. Currently, we have only this one. It's going to take about, about 4 gigabytes of space. Accept the license and start installation. This is going to take a little bit time. As you can see, it's downloading everything from the internet. Okay, this takes a little bit time, but looks like we're almost there. So let's click on finish. Okay, so now we install it, but what is not exactly clear is how to start it. I think this is not really into the documentation, or at least I haven't been able to see that. If you try your spotlight search and just look for GPT-4, well, I found probably the folder that this was installed. All right, so this is the one. And I guess here inside the bin, there is a chat. So let's start this one. Looks like this is taking a little bit time. This is also Mac using M1 Apple Silicon, so I hope this is not a problem. All right, just pop up, it takes time, so it was like about 30 seconds. So let's see, um, maybe the first thing that I would like to try is, um, if you've seen my previous video, I, when I tested GPT-4 versus uh, Vanilla Llama model, let's get some of those questions and see how it's going to perform. So if you remember, one of the questions I had is to try to summarize a text which I took from the Berkshire Hideaway 10K report. So let's see how this is going to work here. Let's paste this. It's thinking. Let's check our memory and uh, CPU consumption. Well, it's definitely a uh, CPU intensive and currently is using about four and a half gigabyte of memory. All right, it starts the summarization. This took about 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, we see it's definitely not one sentence. It's really elaborating a lot, but it's good. So let's compare this with the previous response here. Maybe in the next video, I'm going to try several models and put the outputs side by side to see how the different models are performing. So the next the next one where uh, the Llama and the GPT, the original GPT-4 model was struggling a lot where create a Python function that detects, py that detects prime numbers. So let's try this again here and see how well this is going to work. All right, so this is actually starting really very good. Now it writes even comments inside, which was not the case before. It's finally realizing that it should take numbers or should check numbers one and below one. Mm, very interesting. It looks way better than the previous version of the model. I'm not sure why everything is so big, and but why the resolution is like this. Maybe that's something that we can fix later. Oh, and really starts also to describe how to what the function is doing. Okay, I know this is a simple question, but that's, the output is definitely big progress comparing to what I've seen before. The output is slow. So this output takes now probably about more than a minute, almost two minutes to complete. Let's see the CPU utilization and the memory. The memory utilization, as you can see, increased and the CPU is 
still keeping up very high and it's still producing content for that question that's amazing it's probably a little bit too much now a lot of what you see here i i haven't seen that method before i'm not sure if that really makes sense that's something that i need to validate i wonder if it's gonna work faster if i run this on gpu on machine with a nvidia gpu amazing it's producing content already for three minutes or even more it takes a lot of time wow well on a positive side this definitely gives you this time a very elaborate description and all this by only asking to create a python function that detects if a number is prime or not all right it's finally done and it's probably working for three minutes or something so look how much content it generated so the function at the first look looks probably okay it's definitely better than before and it's a lot of explanation <laughs> that's amazing so i need to double check over later if this really makes sense uh let's try the uh, another question let's see how it's going to uh, answer on this if 15 is a prime number this was something that the previous version of gpt trained on llama was actually providing a good response but it was detect but it was saying that 15 is a prime number which obviously is wrong so let's see how the how it's going to perform this time oh no it says again that 15 is a prime number. That's a disappointment. Mm. Okay, that's mess up. Not good. Let's double check this answer. Is 15 a prime number? No. Is 31 a prime number? Yes. But definitely not for the reason that was provided here. It says that it's a prime number because it's divisible only by 2, 3 and 31. So why is 31 a prime number? Then 31 is a prime number because it's divisible only by 1 and the number itself. That's what prime number is. So that's here very wrong. Which is very sad, by the way, because the previous version that was tuned on Llama was at least giving us the right, the right explanation why prime number is prime number. All right, let's move on. Let's see if it's going to give me the first five prime numbers this time. Well, I actually was giving correctly the first prime numbers also in the previous version, but let's see what's going to happen here. Hmm. Okay, it's not able to generate prime numbers. It, well, that's a disappointment again. Okay, the last thing I want to try is the error messages I had when I was trying the previous version of GPT for all, where they tuned the llama model. So the question now is, was the llama base model better than the GPT-J model? And that's why this tuning didn't work that well. What will be interesting to try is to use the same data set, which is publicly available, and to apply that data set on llama and compare the results. Even though technically this won't be something that you can use commercially because of the llama license at least you will know if the you will have some ability to compare and see if the underlining model was not okay trained in this case the gptj okay so we see here looks like it's providing a good answer but it's not telling me what this well it tells me that it's outdated but it's not showing me how to okay let's let's ask the python Let's see. Let's see if it's going to tell me because before it was responding that it's outdated and I have to update, but it also giving me how to do the update and that's not happening right now. Okay. So now probably it's going to give me the command. What is nice is that it also has this formatting now. So theoretically in the next version of this UI, they can update it to look a little bit better like it is in the chart GDP when they, when they produce a code to have a better formatting. Okay, so this is good. It's kind of okay. It's great that it has license and the data was obtained in a way that likely allow commercial use. But the response, uh, hmm, especially the prime number questions, this was kind of a disappointing. Hmm, <laughs> that's interesting here. Well, that that's okay. But what is a tokenizer? So, oh, uh, is there some Python version? Just wanted to check if there is a version that has tokenizers with double I, but there is nothing like this. So that's actually very interesting. Where did it came from? Did it hallucinate? All right. So I think that's for today. I hope you learned something and see you next time.